Now, once I took it out, I'm sure you noticed that the kick just sounded a lot cleaner. Now we're gonna move on to our hats. Okay, I had to take a minute to arrange those hats. As we were talking in arranging in hardware versus software video. Now, let's check out the frequency of those hi hats. They sound good, but I would like them a little brighter. So I'm just add a EQ over here. And I'm also going to take out some of the low frequency. I don't want to take out too much. I don't want it to sound thin, but I do want everything to have its own frequency, whether it's a kick, strings, or a snare. Speaking of, sna speaking of snare, let's move on to the snare. And what we're doing right now is called isolating frequencies. Isolating frequencies and eliminating unneeded frequencies. This snare has an awesome reverby type effect on it, which sounds cool, but we still want to EQ those frequencies. So now listen to the before and the after. We're going to go, come here to the drum roll. I actually like the way that drum roll sounds, but I do believe it stops kind of abruptly. So I'm going to add a light reverb to give it uh, a little bit more of a roll and a pre-delay. It means it's going to begin rolling a little bit before the drum actually gets there. So let's see how that sounds. Don't really like the delay being that much, so I'm going to cut back on the delay. I'm going to add a little reverb and I'm going to fade this drum roll. It just doesn't sound so abrupt. And also give the time for the, you to hear the reverb. A lot better. Also a lot smoother. Doesn't sound like it just cuts off on you. Now we have some transitionals. We're gonna go into one of our transitional sounds. In this case, chimes. And you want chimes to be somewhat bright. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little stereo imaging trick, small auto pan. So it's going to make the chime pan a little bit, and I'm going to add reverb, it's going to make it sound a little bit wider. Let me use a pre-fader reverb this time. And remember, every situation is different, but you can apply a lot of these same rules to your mix and get a great mix. I know you probably can't hear that, but what it's doing is slightly panning left to right, giving a great stereo widening sound. One reason, since we're talking about stereo widening, they're going to also stereo widen the mastering process. So you don't want to make it sound too wide or to sound overly wide and sound really, really thin. It's also great to have a PA or some monor monoral point of reference. What a monoral point of reference will give you, it'll let you know if it's sounding too thin. If you can get the sound really full in a PA or probably pressing a monoral button on your control, on your D control or Mackie control, and still get that wide sound, you know you're on, to, on your way to a great mix. I'm gonna bypass the vocals and the effects on the vocals again. Let's just hear that. You can just tell the difference by not even adding too many effects, but by eliminating unneeded sounds, we we're able to really clean that mix up and give it a nice warm feel. Finally, we're gonna just put a slight, and we're already grouped the guitar here. I just added a stereo widener to the guitar, compressed it a little bit, a chorus, a reverb, and a pre-fader delay. Really brightened that guitar up. Didn't have to do too much to it. Also with the vocals, a, a stereo, a low reverb, a low delay, and in this case, a lot of chorus because we wanted that big fantasy type effect on the voice. That big, really poppy, jewel back in the 90s kind of sound. 
Now what we're going to do, we're going to add a light L2 compression. I turn my sub off, it still sounds great. And we're going to play it on the PA system. Now playing on the PA system, it sounds like the hi-hats are a little high. So we're going to come back to our reference monitors, turn off sub on, and see is that hi-hat really a little high. So I've turned down the hi-hat, I'm going to go back to our PA system. Much better. That's why it's always great to have a second point of reference. We're going to add our vocals back in. I actually have already added uh, read and write to fade out at the end and everything is a little hot I want to lower the master vocals but since I put that right on it it's not going to allow me to unless I want to rewrite the automation I don't want to rewrite the automation so I simply come to my master track here I'm going to lower that by three I'm going to lower my vocals by three which would put it at a negative 126 Roughly. Let's see if it still is maxing out. And the mixing process is not critical to have your music blasting because remember, once they go to master it, that they're going to level everything out. And if you've added a lot of uh, limiters and gates and presses on your master track, it's going to be really hard for them to master it without it sounding splashed. A good tip to actually mix by is just to go to your master fader, add an L2 or L3 compressor or some type of um, maximizer, mix it down with the maximizer on it, then take the maximizer off. And that's how you get a great mix. Once again, I'm Johnny Omega, and remember, dreams can't come true.